All right, so this has been in discussion for a while uh, that the uh, new user experience is not exactly ideal. We kind of throw people in the deep end uh, in Galaxy. When you first show up, you kind of get bombarded with all of the information, but no real way, no, no real info on how to actually use it. You have a massive list of, of types of tools. You don't actually see most of the tools themselves, uh, which can be very overwhelming to somebody who has never used the platform before. Uh, the, the masthead, while again, once you know what you're looking at can be pretty informative, you don't necessarily know what, the, what a workflow is, what the different types of visualizations we have is, or how to access shared data. You have an empty history panel that like, maybe we wanna put a button that not when it's empty that says upload data or something like that. That's a whole other conversation. And the center panel um, has no real, uh, on, on main at least, has no real information on how to get started. Um, this is me, I just created a new account just to see if, if it was just me or what. Sorry, Jen. Um, but uh, to that end, there has been discussion on how to revamp the user's first experience to get them into Galaxy faster, let them know how to use it more easily, and also as a more involved, like how to use Galaxy if you've been using it for a while, but you don't quite remember something and you don't want to jump over to training. So priorities for new user. Provide an optional tutorial that you can easily exit on, on the start of a new account to uh, very easily differentiate any server um, for what you can do and what it specializes in uh, very rapidly. Make it in-depth enough to easily get started, but not enough that a user has to spend an hour and a half getting to know every facet of Galaxy. Uh, anything more in-depth needs to go to training. And it needs to be really easily modifiable so that we can quickly add in new things on new releases as they come up or on different servers, uh, make those really easy to make. So this is what we have now. Um, it is, uh, we, we have built in kind of three levels of uh, welcome. So you have the main one, which is, this is what you would see on your first login. Uh, obviously this can, like the images can be shifted out, um, but the most basic version focuses on data tools and workflow. Within each of these, you have subtopics, each of which leads eventually to a slideshow, which I can show in a moment. But a user can navigate through this very easily and learn on any aspects they, they have not yet had the experience with, with a workflow that they can, I mean, with a slideshow that they can quickly and easily parse through that has text and images that they can skip around and look things up in very easily. The, very, uh, the most default version, as I said, is data tools and workflows. Uh, the data has topics on upload, uh, remote retrieval, sharing, and, mod and uh, data and metadata modification tools, intro to the standard tool form and visualization tools. I haven't made one for ITs quite yet. And workflows is how to extract from, an, uh, from, a, uh, from a previously run analysis, how to import remotely and how to share. So the actual mechanism for this is pretty basic. It is a, the, the standard one pulls an NPM package uh, that contains a bunch of images and a couple of JSON files that it knits together and imports um, in, into as a single JSON object and serves on the welcome page. You can change this, however, uh, with a new variable in the Galaxy YAML file, which is welcome directory. By changing that out, we're using uh, Webpack's dynamic imports to uh, not pull in the NPF package and allow a user or an admin rather to create their own JSON files and folders and, and directories of, of images and subdirectories and how, like there's a, there's a structure that I can explain more in depth later um, that they can very easily customize one for any given server um, and import there. You can also uh, change the existing one by pulling the NPM package and altering the files. You can use it as a basis and then go from there. Big roadblocks. Uh, we need Webpack 5 because Webpack 5 has a dynamic imports. We, we can't currently uh, change the imports depending on, on the variable. Uh, Dan has a PR in this. 
and it is mostly complete. He unfortunately most likely cannot join this meeting as he's having a bit of a, a child emergency. Um, we're hoping to get this up and running uh, by GCC. Um, it, it, we're not sure if it will be on main by GCC, but it should be able to be on main by GCC. And I'm also looking for any comments on additional standard content that we might want to add other than ITs, because I still need to write that. Um, this default node package with the default contents, is that going to be, uh, presumably that's going to be managed via GitHub in a new repository? Yes, I, I have one that I'm, that I'm using right now, but once, uh, once it's up and running, I'm going to um, fork it and just hand it over to Dan and on Galaxy. Okay. And so we'll just need to make sure that the version of that package that's pinned with a Galaxy version sort of matches the version of Galaxy. Yeah, um, it is, uh, the, the main reason is because up, it, it will massively increase upload times if the user has to download, has to pull the images every time. Um, it, it's, a, it's, it's not a massive uh, file system, like number of files, but it is a large group of images and that can be a bit of a slowdown on startup otherwise. Yeah, no, I mean, ideally, right back. ideally the whole app would be this way, right? Ideally we could, the whole client would be pulled down from MPN also, and yeah. the, the back end would be decomposed into pieces that we pulled in. So, uh, yeah, and that's really cool. I mean, I like that. I just awesome. Once it's in Webpack 5, it becomes much easier. Wow. Awesome. H have, do you know if the training people have looked at it? Do you think training should be part of the default content? So we already have the link out on the masthead to training that exists, the little cap icon. Um, I think that training definitely, I, 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 will, I, I think it's probably a good idea to add a link underneath for uh, the, the primary welcome page that just says for more in-depth welcome, for more in-depth tutorials, go to training. I think that's probably a valuable thing. Also, this is accessible at any time from the help dropdown, by the way. It would be nice to see how closely we can get that integration. So for example, you can launch the training materials on um, Galaxy instances that have been set up with that, that proxy configuration um, so that you can click the buttons in the training and fill out the form. So it'd be good to make sure that we uh, maintain that nice integration. Yeah, I, I think this is really good usability enhancements. I, but yeah, similar to Dan, I just, there's all these like images and little, you know, the, the training material repo just added this new concept of uh, like, like a fact, like a frequently asked questions with little snippets of like, just short little quick things. And it kind of looked a bit like what was in the how to upload data to Galaxy, for instance. Um, and I know that there's like a slightly different audience um, and so that's fine and slightly different use case, but to, to whatever degree we can sort of, you know, merge with them would be nice, but I, I don't know if that's possible. And I, I don't, I don't think that should, this should block in anything. It's just, you know, a comment uh, that'd be nice to, to sort of work on, on sort of synchronizing that. But um, yeah, this is, this looks great. I mean, obviously this is Galaxy needs this, so that's fantastic. Any, any topics I might have forgotten that might be a good idea for a face welcome? Can you show the topic so, again? Alex, um, I just have a question about this slide, so that, that, yeah. that last one. Yeah. So um, when you don't include borders to show, to show the navigation, it's hard to know what this means. So those are hover, and, sorry. The, these turn, turn gray on hover, but yeah. OK. so like. But it doesn't um, show you that you need to click on upload data. And there is a. Uh, this is an image. This is an image. This isn't the actual modal. Right. So I'm wondering if this should include something within it that has like it's upload data and then an arrow and this is what you get. Oh, uh, I, I sorry. This is part of the slideshow. Like the the next slide focuses on the button. 
Okay, and then there's a t there's a tutorial in, D in the DTN that's specific to it. Are, are we going to include links for how to on the slides? So again, we can we can edit the content as much as we'd like. This is a okay. uh, this is a file that we can very like it's a JSON that we can very easily hyperlink from. Okay, I think um, that would be really like nice. I know EU does that in a lot of their slideshows, so it kind of. Um, it just kind of adds a little context, like, okay, what is that? And then you go in and you can find, but uh, everything looks fabulous. This is great. Thanks. So, uh, and then yeah. those the topics, yeah. Thanks, yeah. So with that static image, would it be possible to some way actually embed the widget and then use tours? Um, so the reason originally that we took it this direction was because tours weren't working for a little while. I don't know if they currently are. Um, so the answer is possibly. <laughs> I need to, to double check if, if tours currently function. Yeah, because it'd be awesome if you could actually interact with the thing as it's teaching you, right? Yeah. The, the way that the, um, the way the slides are set up, are those in JavaScript? Like, is, is that something you'd be able to embed a component in? They are through. They are done by a view serving a JSON object. So I I don't know that it, like the way it's written right now that it would be able to. It's just showing it. It's part of a um a Bootstrap view um slide. Hey Alex, I um I called him from my phone. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm a little late. Um, yeah. So we could we could totally do that. Uh, and embed actual components. The, the, the problem is gonna be the mounting and context available. Um, so if you wanted to embed like an upload modal or something like that and have it pop up automatically, um, we'd have to think about how it actually gets strapped in given the configurability of the component here. Um, in, in other words, like, so if, if, if uh, usegaussi.org wanted a tutorial with an upload component and that you did not. Um, how is that specified in the the extra bundle that gets built for this thing? Um, you have a YAML should've... configuration or what's that? A YAML configuration or something? Uh, well, so it's it's yeah, I mean it's a JSON blob, but where where do you actually specify that? So in in COVID nineteen, I use Galaxy.org for embedding. Um, components in Markdown, there's there's like a library that handles it and plugs it all in and all that. Um, it might be, I'm not sure how easy it'll be to to make that embeddable from that end. Uh, I think we can do it though. Um, yeah, I mean, this is awesome. So it sounds like a lot of work. So make sure you have something for a GCC if that's what you're aiming for. <laughs> yes, that, well, that, that's exactly it. I, first I, pass I, is static. Make, yeah, I think we make the first pass do that static. Yeah. Also, just a, a quick note about the uh, tours. Uh, they are currently non-functional. Um, I've been working with uh, Helena a little bit uh, just to, uh, there's a PR open on the training materials uh, GitHub repository. Uh, we're investigating how difficult it would be to uh, get them functional again. There's been some changes in the UIs. Uh, the CSS selectors mainly have changed, so they don't really work anymore. And we're taking a look to see how much uh, effort would be to get them uh, in line in sync with the UI again. Uh, and feel free to change whatever plugin or backend library is being used for that too, right? I don't think we're. Yeah, so there's, there's also, there's an open PR on Galaxy for swapping that from Bootstrap Tour to Bootstrap Tourist, um, which is so, Bootstrap tour got abandoned a couple of years ago. Um, and I think incompatibility, incompatibility with that and it's either jQuery or something um, is what's causing a lot of the issues right now. So there's a tourist PR open that should fix up most of that. This happened with the Bootstrap 4 swap. Awesome. We should coordinate on those PRs though. That's if there's something on the training material site, I haven't seen that. So I have some minor suggestions. Can you show the welcome uh, page again? 
So I feel like the icons are way too big in contrast to the text. Um, maybe that's just me. But no, it's not just you. We talked about it when we initially oh, okay. discussed it about two months ago. I agree. All right, cool, cool. It should cool. be like data, tools, and then workflows, right? It, it should be more it's, balanced. It's, it's like, CSS. I, mean, I, can, I can switch it out. Can, right. And then if you can show, um, so I would suggest for the right and the next one where you have the slides. Mm -hmm. So since these are images, um, I don't want, I mean, I would suggest that we, that it might lead to confusion because in some cases we just like our tool form also has no background. And so it, you can't really distinguish visually if you can click on it or not. So I would suggest to um, put the slides maybe in a box and with a light gray background or something so that it's, that it's kind of differentiated from our regular components. Uh, I think that would help just like the whole thing in a small box and like round it and then with a slight gray background and the return button, but these are minor things. One can talk later about it. I would probably put to the upper right, left. But That's right. Yeah. So because we had the issues which, with big screens that um, that the return button would be then at the bottom. It's just like some disbalance, but the upper left, right would probably be good. But here, yeah, as I said, like one round box and then the whole thing in there, then one would see that it's kind of not clickable. That should be docked at the bottom, if I remember. But it is. That is, can, that is currently can pinned at the bottom. Yep. Mostly because otherwise it moved along with the size of the images and I spent mm -hmm. multiple hours trying to get that to not happen. But yeah, this is great. Of course, this will improve definitely the first um, arrival for new users on the page. I'm also using the font awesome stuff, as you can tell, but like that's not strictly necessary if people have preferred images to, to represent any given thing. I'm totally cool to use those too. Yeah, it's first pass, right? If we have nice uh, sort of professional graphics mocked up for tools, workflows, data, that kind of thing, that'd be... That'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, and then, what should okay. the process be? I mean, I, it seems like a lot of people, uh, I mean, like I'm, I'm very curious to get in there and like look at the initial content, although I'm not really the person that should do that, but is, we should maybe like have a meeting with, I don't know, Jen and Helena and Saskia and like some developer, presumably Alex or Danon or somebody so that we could like, you know, have, have more users hacking on that, uh, the, the initial content. I'm, uh, yeah, that, I, 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 a meeting to walk through all of that might be good. Was just my yeah. good call. So the plan was to have a meeting with the GOAT group, working group, to loop Perfect. that in on like the next, yeah, sometime this quarter. So that's a good idea and already in the works. <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, yeah, the, the other thing is that that could be a round table too, potentially. Uh, just like go through the content if we have an open week slot sometime. But uh, the GOAT group might be more focused. And so that conversation might be more productive that way. But yeah, awesome. Okay. A anyone have else have any comments? Um, I guess everyone would be happy to... Yeah, I guess I, I, I said it when mo when there were only a few people on, but this was, I told Anton ahead of time, this is going to be a pretty short one because it's not particularly complex. Okay, is there any... This not is complex cool. yet. This is true. <laughs> but it's very extensible such that if we wanted, you know, I think we should stay focused and get something done, but if we wanted to build on it and add additional vignettes, that would be straightforward to do. Um, and hopes Jeremy would be here because he was the one most excited about this from the last few times. Well, he'll see it on main soon, it sounds like. So this is true. Um, awesome. Well, I'm going to stop recording then, I guess. Was there any uh, like release related stuff or anything like that we want to talk about? Do we want to 
does the uh, to use this time, does the testing group still need more people? Yes, I was just uh, about to put out a, a call for uh, participants. Uh, I still need a, a few people to round out the group. So if anybody uh, wants to volunteer and, you know, potentially spare their mates from my random number generator that I'll use to select the team. Uh, if I don't have volunteers, that'd be great. Um, Cause I'd like to uh, send out invites, uh, you know, ideally tomorrow if I can, so we can re meet early next week. Uh, maybe actually start the testing next week as well and get done so we can uh, get issues and notes to the uh, dev team to wrap up. You know, so it's it's a small release. So, you know, if you do it now, it will be less work the next time around. Yeah, exactly. So if you, you know, volunteer for this one, it's a, an easy release. There's only a few issues to test out. You'll get off easy, whereas next time, uh, you know, might be a lot more work. So <laughs> You're get it out of the way while it's easy. GCC feature uh, uh, surge. <laughs> or you can volunteer a friend. <laughs> Don't forget to submit abstracts. Do Monday? Yeah, I believe they do Monday. Just to clarify, do we need to submit, we don't need to submit an abstract for the training tutorials, or do we? That's built into the schedule. Those are happening, period, right? I think Those are if not you've been tapped to, to do yeah. uh, one of the trainings, then there's no abstract to submit. That's a different part of the program. Do we have any... Uh water stand on you know how abstracts and registration is going i guess that's a no <laughs> i guess no dave today so i have a, a usability question is it possible to download when uh, like you have a tabular file in history and you click download to download it with uh custom extension like text or something as opposed to the that. You should never download with that. Uh, but it, it would be the predefined one. Um, so the, the one that corresponds to the data type. Okay. It's always one-to-one -one mapping. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you know the special invocation, you can change the header. Um, but it's not super yeah. okay. convenient. Wasn't Asunto working on a tool that would switch the data type of, uh, of a collection or something like that? I see she's here. Yes, I'm here. Um, it's not ready yet, um, but you can change the data type of a collection using the converter tools right now. That's just for like a whole collection of known with a uniform homogeneous type, right? This, and this is asking about a direct file conversion from A to B or something like that, right? For just a single data set or for a collection? I think Ennis wants a single data set, right? Yeah, there's a single data set, yeah, but like just, more, just on download, not, uh, not within Galaxy, not actually change the data type, just at download time, download it as a custom data type. Mm -hmm. You should be able to I mean, like it's the, the same file. Yeah, the extension. Yeah, so oh, yeah. you can, um, so now when you hover over it, it shows you, um, um, not logged in, but if you hover over the download button, it says to X, um, something, something. So I think since last release, you know, you could type in the extension you want and then you get the extension back, but that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, the only time it should be that is when it's a uh, actual data formatted data type, right? Yeah, if it's dat, it sounds like something's going wrong. Yeah, because you, <laughs> like, you download a BAM file, you get a dot .bam file. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't, something's broken. <laughs> All right, no, thanks. Just uh, double checking here. 
I mean, one thing that uh, in that regard is always annoying is when you download a tabular file and, you know, your setup knows what to do with TSV or with CSV, but it doesn't know what to do with dot tabular, right? I mean, would it make sense to download a tabular, just a default to download on a tabular to, uh, you know, yeah, a CSV or something? TSV, maybe better. Yeah, TSV is what I would say, but because we actually have a CSV, right? Well, we have CSV, TSV, and tabular, and the tab, the TSV is more strict. So I'm not sure it's a hundred percent win if we change that. Um, the TSV is more strict. I would yeah. expect TSV and CSV would be identical, except for a tab instead of a comma, right? No, that, that is uh, identical, and I think they use okay. you know, just the CSV parsing in Python, but the, our tabular data type um, is not as strict, I think. Okay. Um, that's why we have them separately, which is, yeah, we should have unified that at one point. But at this point, I don't think they're exactly the same, so <laughs> it would be tricky to do it. Is it white space handling or something? I don't or remember. What, what's the, okay, all right. I think, I think it is. Yeah, it's something like that. Okay. And mm, like also, clever. you know, the TSV and CSV parsing in Python is a bit, there are different dialects. So you, you have to choose a dialect and it's, uh, it's. You can do that stuff in, in the client now though. I mean, we could, we could very easily stream the text into a file object and manipulate it. And then, you know, as part of the, I mean, if it's something you really want and it, it is something that we could build specific converters for, we could look into doing it in the client. I think most of what we're talking about here, though, wouldn't be reasonable for the client to. Yeah, I mean, that's right? something so we're talking about gigabytes. Yeah, it would only be good for like simple text. previews. Yeah. Y yeah, yeah. For like previews and stuff, absolutely. Um, we, but not we could for... annotate. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Um, we could annotate data types with like a default download extension. And so we could like. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's a Galaxy extension by default, but for just for tabular, we could download them as TSV. And then if we had something else like, uh, I mean, there's other places we have dots in there, like raw.gz or something where we might, you know, we might want that to be slightly different. Yeah. So we could have a download extension on the data type or in the data types XML file. Um, or a list though. Is it, yeah. is it, I mean, so but that's... Is this maybe, this is the, like the, the, display applications 2.0 kind of thing we were talking about, right? Where you can have each data type has multiple ways to display. It's all linked in in different visualizations, whether it's charts or trackster or whatever. Um, and then download is just a different version of that that has multiple output types. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to point out that the modern client, you can in fact stream all that data into a file object. And even if it's large, you can pass through dump it to a link that you click on. It's it's the kind of thing you really can do in the client nowadays, even for big files, maybe not gigabytes, but pretty big files. Um, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It doesn't have to be a simple tra text transformation. Modern The modern native JavaScript objects are pretty, pretty beefy. Um, something to think about if you really want it. I mean, if somebody wants to give it a shot, I'm not sure it's a really thankful task to do it. And it's tricky to get it right. Um, like John's yeah, suggestion is not bad, but like what happens if a user downloads a tabular file, a tabular data type file, gets a TSV, up uploads it back again, and then selects TSV and thinks that he can just go on because he may not be able to, right? So what is the difference like why why do we use tab? I mean, is if we if a tool is to output a TSV, would it display equally in Galaxy? Not display necessary. yes, but because they're not exactly the same, uh, they are, don't inherit from each other, so they are not you know unless the tool said I accept both, um, it's not necessarily working. Looking at the code, the uh, tabular data type definition does a lot more with metadata than the TSV data type definition, so there is a difference there. I'm just saying it's tricky, right? I mean, it's not something you can do in an afternoon. Uh... 
I, I mean, I, I, I think it, I'm fixing tabular to download as a TSV. I mean, you're right that you could, you would upload it and it might not strictly be a TSV. I don't, that's a weird, who is downloading files from Galaxy and re-uploading them and not sniffing, like it's, uh, I don't know that that's a problem, I guess is what I'm saying. I, 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 you know, your TSV web browser extension or it not opening in Excel or whatever seems like the bigger problem um, than like upload and download sort of matching. And then that extension could be, I mean, I could do that in, you know, it's, it's like four lines of code, right? Just like when you, when you like look at the data set to generate that extension to get that download link, you know, you could change it. Um, it's just a MIME type, right? Uh, well, it's the file name, the content attached. Content I mean, this is completely name. configurable, right? I mean, it's not even four lines, it's a single line, but. Um, yeah, so the MIME type and the extension are different, um, but yeah, you just set the extension and that's, that's what it is for the download. But I'm not so sure we wouldn't get into user issues that are subtle. Um, but you know, I mean, just being able to click on it and have it open in whatever thing your computer knows how to display TSV is also worth it. So I don't know. I mean, a dot tabular extension is kind of worthless, right? Like that doesn't exist outside of that's a Galaxy only concept, right? Like how is it, how is it ever useful to have that dot tabular type? I don't. Yeah, you would think it would be either TSV or CSV. And then tabular is an abstract parent that can have a concrete yeah. instance. I think that PSCs need to have like a fixed number of columns, right? Also, is that, am I making that up? Whereas I don't think the Galaxy tabular type needs to have a fixed number of columns. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the tabular data type can definitely do something like, uh, you know, one column first, two columns second, and 15 the third, mm. not complain about it. Tabular can be whatever we want it to be. Tabular is whatever Dan decided tabular was 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. The other problem with the uh, CSV files is there is no real CSV standard. Everybody that writes a spreadsheet comes up with their own, how they're going to handle embedded columns or embedded quotes or uh, whatnot. So it's uh, CSV files are very much a, a moving target, depending on what you want to uh, program you're trying to load it into. Yeah. Just to make it confusing, we display CSV files if you click on the icon as tabular. So you have to look and inside the peak. You have, it's in the peak view, it's correct. But if you display it, it turns into tabular. I mean, that's a good thing, right? Because who would want to look at commas in your table? Well, it's a good thing for um, someone who knows what they're doing. But if you're not sure, like, I guess I've just answered so many questions of people who don't understand. But like, I'm looking at my data. They're like, it looks like it's columns. or trying to put it into a tool. It doesn't accept comma separated. Or maybe we should start parsing comma separated data. So see, uh, SV data as tabular when it gets input to tools, if it's expecting a tab file. I mean, we do, I mean, if it's possible, we do that, right? But, um, you know, Galaxy does a lot of these things. Like we display BAM files as, you know, the SAM representation. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. display compressed files without, you know, <laughs> showing them garbage. Yeah. Right. So I, I think that's a good thing. We should keep doing that. But maybe the Absolutely. UI should reflect like, hey, this is a display, you know, this is a view yeah, of that's the a good data, point. It's not the yeah. raw data. Because the problem yeah. is, is people are gonna, select all copy and put it into a word document to then try to run sam tools on it <laughs> i mean that kind of gets back to the, the thing i mentioned before with this, the the next version of display applications or visualizations or however you want to think about it maybe that that makes that delineation more clear where look you're viewing data but this isn't the raw data that you can download it. yeah i mean this, this would be amazing because it'll also make it much easier to have like custom display yeah. Um, you know, you know, I mean, the eye icon can be one of the visualizations, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Displaying notebooks directly. That would be my first thing I'd do. Also, we should, you know, uh, maybe see if we want to 
uh, do something about the peak because the peak is now stored as HTML and it's in most cases, we don't actually store HTML in the peak in the database. So we actually either have like tabular or we have, uh, I don't know, CSV or we have JSON. Um, I don't know, maybe that's yeah. something we can think about that, you know, that's not super hard to like, have the data type to declare what, what that content is and then mm -hmm. the client render it appropriately. Yeah, I'd love to do what I just described for the peak. I don't like passing HTML back and forth over the API either. It would be good if if we could do exactly what you just said. Uh, if I could feed it into a file object and then render it in some kind of preview, you know, on the client where that's where, where the client rendering should happen, right? Yeah, that's exactly what was pushed for in a, a recent PR. We should totally do it. And do we sanitize that HTML? <laughs> well, it's on the it's generated on the client side, right? So it doesn't. No, I, I meant yeah, yeah. so we're putting the, the HTML we're putting in the database. Um, oh, <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, we want to get away from that anyway, so that's uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to get away from it immediately, or <laughs> you are recording. We probably do to some extent, right? So only. Mm, I mean, that's only generated by the data set classes. Yeah. And hopefully we haven't screwed those, those up. <laughs> I mean, even if the peak is gone, um, I mean, let's put it that way. Most of the peak, you know, show peak implementations actually generate the peak if it's not there. Um, of course, that's terrible because it happens in the front end. Uh, yeah, sorry, we in the, don't. In the web handler. Um, right. We don't want file access during that operation if we can avoid it. But you know, we do that actually. Uh, when we have Well, to. I am not sure we don't actually touch every file object we display when we click on the details view currently. Um, so there's Well, that. if we do, we should fix that. Yeah, we, we have to. That was that. part of the reason for having the peak accessible from the, from the database in the first place. Might also be just when you're administrator, I don't know, I didn't check, that might be the thing. I don't know. Maybe priority for uh, 21, what, I don't know, the last oh, no. uh, turtle. Yeah. Well, that'll be 2201, right? Well, we will have one more starting this year, right? Yeah, after 2109. So it'll be 2201 is the next, next release. Yeah, yeah, as the release, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's great. I'll plan anything you want uh, for next year. <laughs> <laughs> all right then i guess i'll now i'll stop recording <laughs> oh i thought we did oh <laughs>